Uh, we're here today with Dr. Peter Lindsay from the Ben Arroyo Research Institute. He's going to be discussing alpha-centric TCRs in type 1 diabetes, a little bit about him, his bio. He received a PhD in molecular biology from UCLA and performed postdoctoral work at the Hospital for Sick Kids in Toronto. After training, he spent most of his career in the pharmaceutical and biotechnology in, uh, industries, performing research in a number of areas, especially in immunology and cancer. His industry experience began at Oncogen Bristol-Myers Squibb, where he led teams that discovered CD28, CTLA-4, CD80, and CD86 T-cell co-stimulation access, and the immunosuppressive drugs Abatacept and Belacept. From there, he moved to Rosetta Informatics at Merck, where he transitioned into system biology studies and helped pioneer molecular profiling approaches to classify and predict prognosis of breast cancer, guide pathway analysis, and identify targets of microRNAs. After stints as the CSO of two biotech companies, he left industry in 2012 to join the Systems Immunology Division of Benaroya Research Institute. And since then, he's pursued his current research interest in using system approaches to elucidate fundamental immune mechanisms in human immune diseases and to use this knowledge to develop better disease marker, biomarkers and therapies. And this paper talks a lot about developing uh, biomarkers. So uh, very interested uh, to have you uh, walk us through the recent paper. Please drop uh, questions into the chat. We'll take them as we go. And I will be dropping um, his recent paper that we're going to be focusing on um, into the chat as well for people. Thanks so much for joining us. All right. Um, so I'm going to talk today on a sort of new topic, emerging topic, and uh, you can read on the slide. And I'll explain what all this means as we go on. Um, so right. let me just make some acknowledgments before we go. My collaborator in all this, main collaborator, has been Karen Russell Eddy. Uh, some people in my lab, uh, particularly a student, uh, Shubham Bansal, uh, more recently, and uh, the uh, bioinformatic help of Mario Rososco. Uh, just let me... Uh, point out uh, on the right here, uh, Alberto Puglese and uh, Maki Nakayama and my funding sources. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about today are um, what we call alpha chain-centric metaclones, and I'm going to show you that they are an emerging phenomenon. I hate to use that word, but that is sort of what they are right now, uh, with implications for translational applications. I'm going to talk about uh, islet antigen reactive, or I'll be referring to those as IAR, uh, CD4 T cells. And I'll show you that they, they form alpha chain centric metaclones with matching pancreatic infiltrating T cells or PIT T cells, because those are very long phrases. So uh, I'll be talking about IAR and PIT T cells. PIT matching TCRs, um, uh, show you that PIT matching TCRs are more germline like. Uh, have more germline-like peptide binding relative to non-PIT matching TCRs. And then finally, I'll show you evidence that PIT matching TCRs are enriched for cross-reactive TCRs. Uh, let me just give you a brief uh, introduction to the structure of the TCR. Most people, are, everybody's familiar with this by now. Uh, the uh, alpha-beta, TCR alpha-beta, uh, heterodimer binds uh, MHC peptide uh, complexes on an antigen presenting cell. And in panel B here, it just uh, highlights that most of the contacts uh, of the uh, TCR are mediated through the CDR uh, regions. Now, most people, uh, I, I guess, sort of inherently think that because uh, t uh, contacts with antigen are mediated through the CDR is that the alpha and the beta chains um, uh, uh, mediate um, you know, move this, move, mediate contacts equally, uh, but that's not necessarily true. And it's become clear over the last few years that um, in some cases, uh, either the alpha or the beta chain can predominate. This is a, a paper showing uh, how that works. Uh, it's a really nice paper from uh, uh, Hirano's lab at University of Toronto, uh, where they transduce in just an alpha chain from the uh, from um, TCRs recognizing the, the tumor antigen uh, melon A or MART one, and wading through all the controls here. All you need to look at is on the top 
row here. These are four different donors transduced with the uh, MART1 uh, alpha chain only and then tested for binding with a MART1 multimer. And you can see every other uh, uh, column here, the uh, when transduced only with the Al MART1 alpha chain, the alpha chain is pairing with endogenous beta chains uh, randomly, uh, post-selection uh, beta chains, and, and forming um, active uh, melan-A directed TCRs. And this does not happen if you use an irrelevant control, the HIV multimer on the bottom row. So this particular uh, alpha chain is driving the form, the activity of um, many of these, uh, of all of these in, uh, pairings in uh, sort of, um, I don't know, new, new, new neo pairings between the uh, melan A uh, TCR alpha chain and endogenous beta chains. Now, not all of those pairings result in equal avidity, but um, uh, so, so the beta chain is modifying the avidity to some extent, but they, they, uh, the alpha chain works with a lot of different beta chains. And we've developed a way of looking at TCRs uh, using network projections. Uh, it's a, a R package called TCR graph. And what it shows here is uh, sort of the extremes of uh, chain centricity uh, in community structures. So we're, what we call these are community structures of many different clones or collections of clones from different individuals recognizing uh, pair uh, showing the pairing of the alpha and beta chains. So on the left is uh, uh, clones from influenza, uh, M-directed TCRs, and these were obtained from VDJDB. And you can see down here at the bottom a, um, a collection of uh, clones that uh, are of uh, TCRs that share a common beta chain in green with many, many different alpha chains. So this, we would call this a beta-centric metaclone. Others have called them metaclonotypes. On the right is, is the other extreme. Uh, these are uh, SARS-CoV-2 spike-directed TCRs with, where you have multiple betas pairing with a single alpha in, in different individuals. And in this case, we have nearly 100 different beta chains that compare with this uh, particular alpha chain. So this we could, would call an alpha directed um, meta or alpha chain specific metaclone. So, so what what do we know about alpha versus beta? Well, uh, it's not a lot. Uh, the prevalence and function of these uh, different chain centric TCRs are poorly understood. There was a very nice review in uh, last year summarizing what's known about them, uh, but the, with a relatively limited number of known examples alpha chain centric TCRs seem to be more prevalent. So about two to one in this particular review, that of course could change as we learn more, uh, but certainly uh, there are a number of alpha chain centric metaclones. And the features of alpha TCR alpha generation uh, or, or alpha and beta are not generated equivalently in the thymus, uh, but there are certain features of the generation that are consistent with uh, functional alpha chain functional predominance. For instance, the uh, alpha chains recombine after the, the beta chains. Uh, allelic exclusion does not strictly uh, apply to alpha or apply strictly to alpha chains, as strictly as with beta chains. And there's also TCR editing, which can affect choice of alpha chains. So a number of different phenomena in the thymus could affect uh, the uh, dominance of alpha metaclones, alpha centric metaclones. We don't really know which of these are true. And there are a no, no, number of uh, ex known examples where alpha chains dominate interactions with the antigen and dictate the mode of TCR interactions. So they are a thing. And one reason to be interested in them, other than just curiosity, is that um, they, they have translational the potential translational advantages. So for biomarkers, um, public TCRs are, are much preferable to private. 
because, well, it's, it's, you don't want to have to make a new biomarker for each individual if you can get, share uh, into, or use the same biomarker for different individuals. It's much prefer more preferable. Uh, so shared alpha chains are public, and so they potentially have more widespread utility. And what's a, um, um, an interesting uh, aspect of these uh, alpha-centric metaclones is it's, it's potentially simplifies identification of an optimal therapeutic variant in a, in a bulk TCR repertoire. Instead of picking a single TCR clonotype to pursue for therapeutic reasons, you can actually select one if you're dealing with alpha-centric metaclone. You can transduce in a, an alpha chain and select the pairing that gives you the, the best um, option for therapy, That you, whether it's um, lowest uh, cross-reactivity or uh, optimal avidity or whatever. Uh, so it's, it's an approach that has not been uh, used that often, but it... It's something to think about. So the second thing I wanted to talk about um, is actually getting into our data in, uh, with this as a background. And that is showing that IAR, CD4, TC TCRs from alpha chain centric metaclones um, match pancreatic infiltrating or PIT T cells. Uh, so what IAR T cells, what are they? They're uh, antigen-reactive, islet antigen-reactive T-cells from peripheral blood. And it's a fact that these are, are very rare in peripheral blood. For instance, uh, GAD65 uh, antigen-reactive cells are about one in 100,000 in uh, peripheral blood. So this brings up, even though the specificity is what you, you would think they would be important in disease, their frequency uh, brings up a problem, and how can such rare cells in peripheral blood have a meaningful impact on autoimmunity in the pancreas? And we don't fully know the answer to that question, yet even after more than a decade of research on these cells. But um, we found, we got into the area uh, looking, doing single cell RNA sequencing on uh, IAR T cell clones, and we found something which puzzled me. Uh, in, in if you compared, um, it's sort of a natural thing to do to compare private clones and public clones when you get a bunch of TCRs. And we did this, and we ran them through our TCR graph package, and we found something curious. And it, the private clones uh, look uh, like canonical TCRs. In other words, they a uh, particular alpha chain is paired with a particular beta chain for the most part. And they can differ in their, uh, which is shown by, by a, right here uh, on the left red arrow, by a, a green dot and a blue dot connected. And the, blue, the, the dot size can vary because these clones can be expanded. In some cases, the clones are quite big, as shown by these bigger dots down here. Uh, but they're canonical alpha-beta pairs for the most part. Uh, when you look at public clones, it looks quite different. And I, I uh, remember just staring at this, trying to figure out what in the hell it meant. But it, what the most common uh, occurrence in public clones is you have a uh, an alpha chain shared, common alpha chain shared with multiple beta chains. And these can be expanded, as shown down uh, at the bottom here. Uh, but they they just they don't look the same. So we do, we've published a few papers on this now, a couple of papers, and we've explored what this meant. The most recently, um, I, I, it was a study. Peter, uh, oh, excuse me yeah. for a second. Just quick yeah. question before you proceed, uh, just from Giacomo Casella. Do you know if there are any tools such as flow antibodies for detecting and quantifying TRAVs, TRAVS? Um, there's, uh, not, there's relatively few TRA antibodies, uh, available the last time I checked. So no, that has not been done. Okay. Maybe somebody else has more current information, but uh, they're, they're not relatively few reagents. If anyone has that, just drop it in the chat. Thanks for the answer. 
Yeah, so um, looking at um, our, in discussions with Alberto Poblesa and Maki Nakayama, uh, we came up with an idea of how to um, test the idea that uh, IAR T cells in blood are have some sort of relevance to disease in the pancreas, and that's to actually just use the TCRs as barcodes and to compare TCRs in, in our IAR T cells in blood with uh, T cells, uh, pit T cells that Maki Nakayama had uh, isolated or uh, identified. And then by looking at those overlaps, comparing the junctions, we can then compare them. So uh, we've uh, completed this study and published it last summer. And the, the gist of it, uh, or much of the paper can be summarized in this slide, and that is it showing that IAR uh, T cells show share more uh, alpha chains than beta chains. And uh, we compared another number of other parameters which didn't uh, show any differences, but there are predominantly more alpha chains shared with PIT TCRs than uh, with beta chains. And when we use our TCR graph to look at them, again, we see this familiar uh, alpha-centric metaclone uh, structure in the PIT intersecting TCRs, but not in the non-intersecting TCRs, or much, much fewer. So once again, we're dealing with these alpha-centric metaclones and they, they seem to be shared between peripheral blood and uh, pancreatic infiltrating T cells. When you actually look at the sequences of these uh, TCRs, there, there's a lot of, there, you can't analyze them all together because there's, there's just, there's multiple sequences, it's just a mess. But if you pull out a metaclone, in this case, a metaclone of, uh, TCR is recognizing GAD65 and a group of, as well as TCRs that share an alpha chain, uh, but we don't know the specificity yet. The, uh, the junctions, the protein junctions are shared completely as shown on the left uh, for, for the alpha chains. Uh, the nucleic acid sequences of those uh, alpha chains are, are, for, are shared except for one position, which uh, is variable, and it that is a turns out to be a wobble position, uh, which does not uh, affect the uh, amino acid encoded. So the what this says is that different individuals uh, select the same protein sequence from different nucleic acid sequences. And this is an example then of convergent uh, recombination, which uh, generally is taken to mean selection of some sort. We don't know what that is, but it, it implies selection. The beta chains look completely different. They have different uh, uh, amino acid sequence at the uh, protein level or uh, amino acid sequences, and they also have quite different nucleic acid uh, sequences. So no evidence of selection there. So there's evidence of convergent uh, recombination. This is probably the, the part of our work that needs a lot more work, uh, but we're limited by samples. And this is to actually see whether these um, pit matched uh, TCRs show any difference in accumulation during the disease, during disease progression. And using the limited samples we have available, we've looked now in expanded cells and non-expanded cells, expanded meaning found with the same TCR sequences found in more than one cell. And uh, we see an accumulation of the pit matched uh, TCRs in um, um, pre-diabetic, pre and early diabetic uh, individuals, they, the, the numbers of samples that we have did not reach, we did, those numbers did not reach significance, but there is a trend. If you look at non-expanded cells on the right, the, 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 you see a corresponding drop in pit match TCRs in, um, in uh, non-expanded cells. Can, uh, suggested that there is um, um, 
that the bitmatch cells that are there are expanding. Uh, in, in this case, it is select uh, uh, significant. So uh, the trends are in the right direction. Uh, we need a lot more data, and hopefully we'll get that uh, in the future. But what this says is, is it suggests that the pitmatch TCRs are in the right place uh, in the peripheral blood and in the uh, uh, pancreas, and uh, at the right time with to have a uh, right before disease onset uh, to have a, a role in, in disease progression. Okay, so um, to spend a little more time on the pit match TCRs. I'm not, there's a lot of data in our paper on this. I'm going to summarize it uh, pretty briefly, but uh, to uh, show that uh, pit matching TCRs show more germline like peptide binding relative to non pit matching TCRs. Um, so if you look at the um, Compare the CDR links. I, I showed CDRs are where the, the action is in terms of binding uh, CDR1, CDR2, CDR3. If you compare those links between uh, pit matched and non pit matched TCRs, we find that the pit matched TCRs are about a, um, a, a three nucleotides or one amino acid shorter than, um, than um, non pit matched TCRs. In the for the CDR3, uh, the CDR2 uh, doesn't show a lot of difference, and the CDR1 is also shorter uh, in pit match TCRs. Now, what's interesting about this is the CDR1 and the CDR3 are the portions that show the most interactions with antigens, whereas CDR2 is more shows more interactions with uh, MHC. So uh, what this suggests is that the uh, regions involved in antigen binding are shorter in uh, pit match TCRs. And the, we also looked at um, uh, hydrophobicity, and I won't show that here, but we find that the pit match TCRs are also slightly more hydrophobic than the non pit match TCR. So they're shorter in non pit um, shorter and more hydrophobic in the regions that uh, are supposedly involved in antigen binding. So can I just ask a quick question there? So oh. overall, does that relate or correlate to more nonspecific binding, or can you not say that? Uh, I'll get to that. Um, bear with me. Okay. Uh, there's not a direct line I can draw, but it's it's a, sort of a smoking gun, and we I, there is there are differences in um, specificity, which I'll show you. Okay, cool. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. Um, right. So, uh, if we did some molecular modeling, um, using TCR graph two of some of the, or of all of the, uh, TCRs of known specificity that we had, the IAR TCRs of known specificity, and it's, the top row here is really the, the gist of this slide is pretty complicated, but uh, what I want to leave you with is the, um, there's a tendency for um, IAR TCRs to rely more on germline encoded residues for their peptide contacts. And ger the, just to remind you that with the um, CDR1 and the CDR2 are encoded in the germline whereas CDR3 is uh, formed by recombination. So CDR3 is generally the region that has the most peptide contacts, uh, but in, in this case, the, there are fewer CDR3 contacts because there's, the CDR3 regions are shorter, and there's a corresponding increase in the number of CDR1 contacts, which, is, which are uh, germline encoded. You can see in these structures up here, the uh, CDR regions involved in peptide uh, contacts are, are highlighted in red on the gray background. The, the MHC and the peptide have been removed for clarity. And on the right, uh, sorry, on the left is a, a clone that's pit matched. And it, you can see the beta chain uh, in, in the pit matched clone on the left and the non-pit matched on the right has roughly the same number of 
contacts of 431 versus 422 for the uh, CDR3, CDR1, and CDR2 beta chain regions. But the alpha chain shows quite different uh, numbers of contacts. The, uh, the pit matched shows a, a, an alpha chain of uh, four uh, contacts of four residues uh, versus only uh, for the uh, CDR1 versus only three versus three for the CDR3, whereas the non-pit match shows only one alpha chain for, uh, sorry, one CDR1 contact versus six CDR3 contacts in the alpha chain. So there's more, uh, this is a general trend and, and there's more uh, um, CDR1 contacts in the um, pit match DCRs than there are in the um, a non pit match. On uh, the bottom left is uh, the um, showing the total number of contacts for alpha chains and beta chains, and those don't vary. So when you lose beta, CDR3, you have to, the contacts have to come somewhere, and on the right, uh, panel D is showing that the, it's a ratio of uh, the CDR1 to CDR3 ratio uh, is inversely correlated with the um, um, CDR3 length. So there's more germline-like contacts in the uh, uh, alpha chain-centric pit match TCRs. Uh, so come back to Monica's question here about uh, cross-reactivity or specificity. Uh, just a couple of slides on this. Uh, there is a general trend for alpha chain-centric TCRs to show multi-specificity. Uh, it's certainly not well established. Uh, it's just sort of anecdotal at this point, but uh, probably maybe the best um, example of this is, or, or most high profile example of this, is a recent paper from Sewell's group uh, showing uh, alpha chain centric metaclones of Milana or MART1 TCRs uh, in cancer patients undergoing. Uh, T-cell uh, uh, transfer uh, treatment. Uh, and and um, this paper found that um, Milana or MART1 directed TCRs can show specificity for multiple tumor antigens. So they're multi-specific. We see something similar with our uh, diabetes related TCRs. On the uh, left is a, sort of a, a, a chance finding. Uh, we identified a, um, our, we did a, we have an internal database of antigen specific TCRs that people have studied. And just doing a search of that database versus our IAR TCRs, we found uh, that, that someone studying flu TCRs uh, had uh, um, identified a, an identical, nearly identical TCR, uh, recognizing flu uh, to uh, the ones we'd studied for GAD65. And this shows, uh, the panel on the left shows that these TCRs, the flu and our GAD-specific TCR are cross-reactive with flu peptides and GAD65 peptides. So this is, a, an, a, again, a non, an anecdotal example. Uh, on the right is a more global example, looking at VDJDB, looking at pit-matched and non-pit-matched sequences in VDJDB. And these can be divided into sequences with one or multiple epitopes based, based on the literature uh, as summarized by VDJDB. And what we found was that the Pit match TCRs are enriched in uh, VDJDB, VDJDB TCRs with multiple specificity. So again, supporting the idea that these pit match TCRs are multi-specific. So finally, uh, the uh, let me just summarize. Uh, it shows you that IAR CD4 T cells and peripheral blood are related by shared TCR alpha sequences to T cells in the pancreas during type one diabetes. And these shared TCR or TRA sequences, which comprise about 30% of the total junctions, uh, allowing zero or one mismatches, 
uh, they pair with diverse beta chains to form alpha-centric TCR metaclones, which have a propensity for cross-reactivity. So our central hypothesis, our working hypothesis, is that the because of their cross-reactivity, these alpha-centric TCR metaclones of autoreactive CD4 cells play a unique role during pancreatic autoimmunity. And more specifically, uh, shared alpha-centric TCRs are prone to multispecificity mediated by shared alpha chains. And hopefully we will be able to uh, study that in more detail over the next few years. But that's all I have to say. Uh, take any more, any more questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, opening up for questions, here's one. Um, do you see any difference in TRAV public repertoire among CD4 and CD8 T cells? Nothing very big. Um, nothing really stands out. Uh, the beta chains tend to be more private. Hmm. Um, you know, it's always possible as we get more data, there will be a small, uh, you know, relationship there, but it is not standing out as much as the, the alpha chain um, relationships. Um, so I just, I read your paper. I thought it was great. I thought the, uh, I just was thinking about this, like the alpha and beta chains, you know, they arise differently. They have different physical properties, the alpha chains, right? They recombine simultaneously on both chromosomes while the beta chains don't. And they alpha and beta chains differ temporally in development. Like the beta chains are rearranged before the alpha chains. How might both chains experience or develop the shortening and increase in hydrophobicity that your group and Mitchell both found? Like, is it from the start or do you think it's more an environmental exposure in the thymus? Well, presumably it's involved selection of some sort coming through the thymus. Uh, the beta chains rearrange first and they pair with a, with a common alpha chain. Um, or pre, what, what, I forget what it's called now, pre-alpha chain or uh, whatever. Um, and then the alpha chain comes along, uh, is rearranges later. Uh, the and it must the the beta chain has already been selected for expression on the surface, as I remember. And then the alpha chain uh, must mustn't screw that up somehow, and it must allow it the the paired sequence to be successfully navigate all the different kinds of selection uh, that comes that happen. So I, I think it's it's some sort of primordial sequence that's that's selected uh, that's more likely to be selected. Um, maybe somebody who understands time is better than I do has a better idea, but uh, I, I don't think it's an environmental thing that uh, it shouldn't be. That, that doesn't fit with current dogma. Oh no, I just meant the environment of the th yeah. thymus selection. Uh, yeah. Okay. There is a company out there, uh, Stan Wang has a company called Thymune. Um, and, you know, their whole idea is to re-educate um, the immune system using these, I, I, I suppose, uh, it's sort of, it, it's a little bit stealth at the moment, <laughs> but, uh, using their technique, right? So, I mean, do you think that these uh, alpha chains could be, I don't want to say reimagined, but, you know, fixed, basically? By re undergoing, you know, through through a, a biotechnology that of something like thymine. You're asking whether they can be blocked. The formation can be blocked somehow. Yeah, or 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 like corrected. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I don't have any good ideas there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just throwing it out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, you just wonder if it's too short and too hydrophobic. Can you can you fix that? I don't know. Maybe well, it's too all of, all of these things are, are are trends. You know, they're they're it's like waves or, or distributions. We're not talking about um, deterministic, you know, sequences. So I think there are ways to there should be ways to to influence the 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 distribution. Uh, but what those are, I think we're a long ways from that right now. Yeah, we talked a little bit about gaining some uh, cadaveric 
thymic tissue along with some of the TCR data. And yeah, that, it would be actually uh, interesting to look at that uh, and see what... Uh, we do find some of these sequences in cord blood. Um, so that suggests that some of them are present in the thymus, I think. Mm -hmm. Lucy Walker had a question here. Are you thinking of this as specific to T type 1 diabetes or similar phenomenon across autoimmune diseases in general? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I haven't found any good data sets for TCR or some other autoimmune diseases. I've been looking, um, but I haven't found any yet. Um, I mean, it's, most of you know, most of the repositories out there are, um, are, are heavily stacked towards beta chain sequences. We, yeah, there's just relatively little information on alpha chain sequences in general and paired sequences are even rarer. So I think, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to do that comparison, but I haven't been able to do it yet. Maybe across the eye receptor air data commons, there may be something in there, hopefully. Yeah, well, they, that's a good example. I mean, there's what a billion last I looked, a billion sequences in there, and uh, ten percent of them are alpha chains. Yep. And many of those alpha chains uh, are not paired, or most of those alpha chains are not paired. So, <clears throat> we're really um, suffering from information, um, a poor uh, environment. So, I mean, I guess one good thing is these ten um, X experiments that are just you know people are doing all over the place now. Those uh, a lot of the those data are are, uh, are really useful. Um, there's not a great place for you know repository for those data yet uh, that I've seen. Uh, maybe I'm sure somebody's working on that, but uh, that, that'll be really if there was a central repository for all the NX data uh, with with TCR sequencing, that would be that would be really, really helpful. Well, maybe they can be convinced to join the T1D TCR repo. We'll see. Yeah, there's some in there. Uh, there's some, but it's just it's just limited uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they have it, but it has to be you know curated and added. In the whole design of the uh, the repo right now, it's really useful. I mean, there's a lot of really good stuff there, but it's it's uh, it's chain directed rather than pair directed. It's really hard to pull out pairs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've been trying to talking to Brian Corey about it. It's um, it's just not designed that way at the moment. So uh, hopefully that will come uh, become easier to do in the future. Well, maybe that'll be next level. Yeah. Um, thank you again for this great talk. It was really interesting. It's really nice to see uh, these data brought into the spotlight. And um, yeah, your 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 comments regarding the um, expansion of the TCR. Uh, repo are really, really good and really important. So we'll continue to talk about that at the working group. Thank you great. again. Have a great Thanks. rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.